Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Um, today we are looking at this. This is the Ganzo F753M. Now we have previously looked at this knife, but we never really did an in-depth review on it. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, but first off, um, make sure you guys give this video a like. Um, you can go ahead and share it with your friends. Um, today we're going to be talking about budget knives, um, specifically this one. Um, so you guys can comment down below what your favorite budget knife is. Um, and if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell. Hit all, so then you'll get notif notified every time I post a video. So yeah, let's get into this. Um, so first off, we'll do some size comparisons. So I'll just open that up. So first off, we have the Kershaw Hotwire and the CRKT Squid. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So as you can see, it's very similar to the Hotwire. And we also have our Pilot G2 Mini right there. And of course the average sized Zippo lighter. Alrighty. Now let's bring these off to the side. Alright, let's get some specs on this thing. So what we are looking at is, as I said before, the Ganzo Firebird F753M. This has an overall length of 7 inches. Um, and it has a 3 inch blade. Uh, made of hollow ground 440C. Um, the handle is G10. It's actual real G10. Um, with um, milled stainless steel liners. You can see in there. Um, this has two barrel back spacers. Um, features ambidextrous thumb studs. Um, the G-lock, as they call it. Um, a ambidextrous tip-up clip for right and left hand carry. Um, and this comes in right at $23. Alright, so those are all our specs. Um, I don't have a weight on this, but I'd say it's around um, 2.3, something like that. 2.3 ounces. So it's a lightweight knife. Actually, wait, no, it might be a little heavier. Maybe I'll go 2.8, 2.8, something like that. Yeah, so it is a lighter weight knife. Um, it's nothing compared to the bug out or the dragonfly, um, but it is very um, light. All right, now into the meat and potatoes of our review here. Our good and our bad. All right, so first off, good. The ergonomics. This is a very ergonomic knife. It feels good in the hand, both in a like hammer grip and also more of a saber grip. It feels very comfortable. The only little hot spot is the clip, kind of, it pokes you a little bit, but not enough to really make this knife uncomfortable, at least in my hand, and as I have said before, I wear a uh, extra large size glove. Um, so that is the, that's also in the good ergonomics, um, lock, um, this is the G lock, as I said earlier, um, it's basically an access lock, um, and when I say basically, I mean it's exactly the same as an Axis Lock. Um, it has the same pin that goes through, contacting the back of the blade there. And you just pull it back to disengage. It has the same Omega Springs and everything. But because um, Benchmade's patent wore off, this is not a ripoff. Um, the, anybody is free to use that design, or something like it, um, as far as I know. So that's um, very nice to see on a budget knife. Um, as I said before, this comes in at $23. Um, it has a nice, um, it's not deep carry, but it has a nice clip on there. So it has some nice spring to it. Um, and as I said before, it is ambidextrous for tip-up only. Um, it's very Spyderco-esque with that clip. Um, that might be the, really the only thing they're ripping off here. Um, it does look kind of like a spider coat clip. But, um, yeah. Um, so, a nice clip on there. It carries nice in the pocket. 
Um, like I said, it's not a deep carry, but there's just a little bit of it sticking up. Um, about that much right there. So yeah, not a whole lot. Um, the thumb studs on this are really comfortable. Um, they don't really dig into your hand um, when deploying. Well, dig into your thumb when deploying at all. Um, you can even do a middle finger flick on it and they're just fine. Um, they also have this beautiful, uh, I don't know if this is an anodizing or if it's just a coating or what, but it's really nice and it's on all the hardware, all the screws, a nice blue color. But yeah, that's a really nice touch, especially for a $23 knife. Um, the centering is pretty spot on here, if you guys can see that. And that's how it came right from the factory. I mean, I've had this for a couple months now, so there's some scratches on the blade, that's why. Um, the action is pretty good. Um, you can flick it closed and open. Man, I've never realized how hard that is to do on camera till now. But yeah, um, the action's really good. Um, it's not quite drop shot, you kind of have to wiggle it a little bit. But it does, it is pretty solid. Um, it does have a little bit of play in the blade. Not a whole lot, side to side, and just a tad up and down. But, well, that's at least to give it this action. You can have it rock solid, um, it just won't have this action. And I don't mind for a cheaper knife to, I prefer to have a nice action and be fun to play with than it to be more rock solid because I have other knives. This isn't really a heavy user for me. Um, so yeah, uh, centering and action is amazing on this um aesthetics is really nice on this um it has a nice kind of drop point blade here with a lot of belly on it as you can see the belly kind of starts like right about here and it sweeps all the way down so that'll give you a nice um accompanied with that hollow grind nice slicing um with this blade um the um and also the handle um Sorry guys if I seem kind of out of it today, I'm tired and kind of bored because of this quarantine and everything, but yeah. So that's why I might not sound as um, uh, hyper as I normally do, I guess you could say that. Hang on, let me kind of clean off that blade a little bit. But yeah, that's why I'm more docile today than other videos. Um, the quality of this is pretty darn good for $23. Now, if you look on the spine with the back of the blade, we'll handle. Um, there are a couple parts where it's not fully flush, but again, that's to be expected with a $23 knife. But just how this feels, it's got a nice weight to it. The ergos are fantastic. The handle is amazing. Um, it has this jimping right here, which does its job pretty well. Um, even in a reverse grip, it just, it's like Ganzo understands that a knife, that a knife is meant to be held in a hand, and some knife companies don't fully understand that, which kind of boggles your mind when you think about it, but yeah, um, especially for $23, it's really good. Um, it has a lanyard hole right here, as you can see, um, I personally don't like lanyards a whole lot on my knives, unless it's at the very end, like on my squid here, how it's just at the end there. Um, I wouldn't put a deep, I wouldn't put a, uh, excuse me, a lanyard on this, just because it's kind of weird having it come out of the side like that. But um, they did work it into the design. They didn't just have this weird thing coming off for a lanyard hole saying, boom, there's your lanyard hole, which is nice to see, but um, I could go without that. Um, another thing I like about this is, um, this comes in four different varieties. Um, now as far as I understand, they all come with 440C stainless steel, which, you know, isn't horrible, but we'll talk on that a little bit later. Um, um this comes with the black G10, which I have right here. Um, it also comes with a kind of an OD green G10, which is really nice. Um, and as far as I saw, they all have this same blue anodizing. Um, for all the hardware. So that's one thing that is 
interesting to see that they just kept the same hardware for all of the knives, which I can understand for a budget knife. You don't really, you can't do a whole lot without jacking up the prices. Um, but yeah, it comes in a OD green, a Hunter Orange G10, and it also comes with a carbon fiber um, scales. Now, I don't know if that's actual carbon fiber or if it's just kind of like the carbon fiber overlay on G10. Um, I don't have that model, but um, it says carbon fiber, but you know, with cheaper knives, you can't really, you never really know, unless it's from a reputable company. Yeah, <laughs> sorry um english is not my best language um a trustworthy company it's an easier word to say um but yeah um another good thing that's this knife has is this is a fully ambidextrous knife that means whether you are right-handed or left-handed you your experience of this knife will be exactly the same um with the g-lock um it comes out on both sides so i can do it with my right hand or my left um, with the dual thumb studs, you can also do it right hand or left with the thumb deployment or the middle finger flick. Sorry guys, it's my left hand. It's not not great with knives. There we go. That right, closing's a little rough for the left hand. And the pocket clip is also reversible. So for that 10% of the population, or however many there are, um, but they all seem to be at my job for some reason. I got a bunch of left-handed people at my work. Man, it's crazy. But yeah. Uh, for that 10% of the population, this is a very good knife for them. Um, and also, it's cheap. So if you got a buddy, um, it's like he's right-handed or left-handed, you know, at your job, um, just a friend of yours, you know, um, maybe from church or other social gatherings. Um, maybe he wants a knife. He sees you carrying all your benchmates and stuff. He's like, oh, man, those knives are really cool. You know how everybody is when they see a knife because... Remember, people, knives are tools, not weapons. Nothing, they're not scary at all. What's scary about this? Nothing, exactly. But, hey, you could get him this. 23 bucks. So you don't worry if he breaks it, because it's 23 bucks. Just get another one. So, um, yeah, that is your good. Um, so, quick run over that. So, the Ergos um, is good. The lock is good. Um, very fidget-friendly. Clip is nice. Um, the dual thumb studs. Very comfortable. Um, centering is pretty darn perfect. Um, action is beautiful. Um, it looks nice. Um, I wouldn't really call this a gentleman's carry, but you could carry it and it wouldn't look too out of place. Um, quality build for what you're getting. Um, the different, um, colors it comes in is also really nice and being fully ambidextrous. Alright, so now into the bad. Um, there's actually not as much bad in here as you'd think from a um, $23 knife, but there is some. Um, first off, we're not going to start on too bad of a note. Um, 440C um, is the steel on this. It is not the best. I mean, it's not S30V, obviously. Um, but as far as I can tell, it's a pretty good steel. This is the only knife I have 440C in, at least that I know of. Um, it holds an edge, not bad. Um, putting on an edge is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, I even have a little bit of a mirror edge on there. And, uh, is it mirror? No, not really. Okay, never mind. Sorry guys, I thought I had a mirror on there. Nope, I don't. Maybe that was from the other day. But um, yeah. Um, so it does sharpen up easily. It holds an edge pretty good. Um, from what I've heard, it's better than most of the um, 8CRs and um, even Oz 8, a US 8. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, I haven't, I haven't experienced um, a US 8. Um, but yeah, um, it does seem pretty similar from what I saw online. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not horrible. But you know, for twenty three dollars, it's Probably one of the best steels you can get. Um, I mean, there is D2. Um, D2 has been, especially in 2019, was like the year of D2. It was crazy. But um, Ganzo and Firebird, um, they make, um, their company makes some, some of their cheaper knives um, in D2. And they're running about like 30, 40 bucks. So, you know, around average for some D2. Um, 
so yeah so the steel like i said is okay not bad um the hardware while it is beautiful um it is just um cheap chinese kind of strips out if you look at it wrong kind of stuff so i don't really take this apart for one i can't um because i'm i'm pretty sure this is a free spinning pivot i could be wrong um i took it apart and it was kind of weird but um you can only i could only take this side off all the way and this actually does have the omega springs for the uh g lock so like i said it is basically an axis lock um but yeah the hardware will strip out on you um you can see that one's kind of stripped and that one right there is stripping out um but yeah so the hardware while it is beautiful it's not the best um it has a little bit of lock stick um just a little bit i don't know if you can hear that let me hold up the microphone it just kind of i don't know if you can hear that yeah it kind of just pops a little bit when it disengages but again, $23, you're not expecting Benchmade quality. Um, and also with the lock, um, these little uh, nubs on this, um, while they're actually shallower um, than most of the Benchmade ones, I believe, I don't own any Benchmades, but from what I've been told, um, these are closer to the handle than the Benchmade, so it's a little more comfortable in the pocket. But also, um, they're a little sharp. Um, they have some sharp edges on them. So, I mean, the first time I got this, like, literally for a week, I was doing nothing but just flicking this open and closed because it is so much fun. One of the most fidgety knives you can get is with a knife or with a lock like this. But, yeah, it's just a little sharp. Um, my fingers actually built up calluses in those two spots just from doing that. But even now they're still sharp, and since it's hardened, it's hard to uh, actually knock those down with just some sandpaper, some files, because it's in such a small area that it just doesn't doesn't work very well. But I mean, I honestly don't feel a whole lot in my daily use. It's really when I start doing this, just flicking it open and closed and open and closed and open and closed again, is when I start feeling it. Um, now, I don't know, that could just be something with all axis type lock knives. I don't know, this is the only one I own. So you guys can let me know um, if you have that same experience um, with either a Ganzo or maybe a Benchmade or something. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much all the bad right there. Um, 440C is an okay steal. The hardware will strip out on you 100%, um, unless mine is just a fluke. Um, has a little bit of lock stick, not a huge deal, um, and the sharpness on the uh, lock bar um, studs, I guess you'd call those. I don't really know what those pieces are called. But, alright, um, so uh, what are my thoughts on this? Um, so for one, it's very fidget friendly, as I've mentioned numerous times in this video, and probably demonstrated. Um, so for the price, I would definitely recommend this. Um, the quality is there. Um, I mean, this is real G10, um, which has some grip to it. I probably should have put that in the good, but yeah, quality G10. I mean, for $23, um, I don't know another knife that is this good that isn't a Ganzo, because Ganzo makes some pretty nice stuff. I mean, nice in the realm of $20 to $40. And you can only get so nice in that budget. But, like, I mean, for the price, it, it, it really is a good knife. And I definitely recommend picking one up. Um, you can find these on Amazon um, for $23, like I've said. Um, um, it does have a little play. And really, to get a nice action, like what mine has, you're, you're going to have to sacrifice having a rock-solid build-up. I mean, it's not like I can... I can spine whack this on this metal plate. Sorry guys, if that was loud. I don't I never really realized that you guys are listening through a microphone. But um if that was loud, I apologize. But I can spine whack this almost all day. And it's still not gonna give out on me. At least as far as I've tested. Um so yeah. I appreciate you guys hanging in there. Um 
with this video, getting through 20 minutes of me rambling on and stumbling through sentences. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, so as I said before, um, you guys can like this video, um, share it, um, tell me your favorite budget knife um, in the comments. Um, you can also tell me your favorite budget steel, because I know some people like different knives, but they'd prefer to have a different budget steel. So yeah, um, what's your favorite budget steel and knife? Um, and yeah, um, if you're new, um, like I said earlier, subscribe, um, hit that notification bell. Um, I really appreciate all you guys that came over from Facebook, um, from that knife group. I really appreciate you guys coming over and supporting a little, a uh, small timer like me. Um, and yeah, um... Hope you guys are staying safe with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I try not to bring it up too much because I know we try and stay on the bright side. You know, this is a rougher time for the world. And, you know, we're all in this together. So, um, um, yeah. Um, just know I've been praying for you guys. Um, for you guys to stay safe. Um, and, yeah. I'll talk to you next week. Later.